This past weekend, Temple was host to a fencing tournament that included fencing teams such as NYU, Cornell, Florida, and North Carolina. Intrigued about such an event, Sports Update decided to stop by the women's portion of the tournament to learn some more about the sport that most people outside of fencing know little about. Fencing is, is one of the oldest sports that exists. I mean, it's been around for over 5,000 years. Um, you can see back in Egypt, there are actually uh, people who are obviously practicing, similar to, to modern fencing, on the walls of, of with hieroglyphs, where they have masks on and are obviously not in combat, but are actually practicing and, and doing some sort of a sport. There are three different events in fencing, the saber, epi, and foil. Each event describes the type of sword used. The way you score is different in each of them, like with Epe, uh, the whole body's target and you hit with the point. Uh, foil, the torso's target and you also hit with the point. And the weapon I found Saber, uh, everything above the waist is a uh, target and you hit with either the point or the sides of the weapon. It's a slashing weapon. Fencing is a very complex sport with a rule book that is 168 pages long. Mastering the sport takes a lot of hard work and as Cornell head coach Irina Dolchik says, it's more than just a physical sport. It's very smart, technically tough sport, why it's, it's hard to explain in the beginning, but it's very smart sport, why we call it physical chess. It's just a very mental sport, um, you have to really think about your strengths and weaknesses and your opponent's strengths and weaknesses. and. Um, it's also interesting because you can fence as an individual or as a team, so it has both aspects. Fencing may never be as popular as baseball or football, but with its popularity rising, the matches that took place here at McGonagall Hall may just be a few years away from being broadcast to your television. Reporting for Temple Sports Update, I'm Matt Fine.